Hi, I'm recording right now. There's a little blinking red light in the bottom right that says I'm recording. Hey, I might many people have seen this word before, polynomial. Who's seen that before? Polynomial. Everybody raise your hand. I'm just telling you, raise your hand. You've all seen polynomials before. You've all seen polynomials before. Is a sum of power functions ax to the p where each power is a whole number. Okay. So if each power is a whole number, what can the powers not be? What are they not supposed to be? What's one thing? Fractions or? Yeah, decimals or decimals after a zero. Negative number. No, no negatives, right? No negatives. So that's the first thing you can use to disqualify something as being a polynomial. The one thing that this definition doesn't talk about is so p, p has to be a member of this set. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? But what about, what about a? What can a be? And that means contained in, that little e, that means contained in. What can a be, the coefficient? What can the coefficient be? a can be any real number. And what's a real number? Here's all real numbers right here. Here are all real numbers. There's another half of this right here. And they make up the complex numbers. Does anybody know what the other half of the numbers are called? Or what's a real number? You know this. What's a real number? What's that called? A line. The real number line? A real number is any number that has a home on that line. So what's a number that's not on the real number line? You know this. E is on it. I. Do we know where E is exactly? No. no, but is it on the real number line? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a real number. I is not. I is what type of number? Imaginary. imaginary number. So the coefficients can be real, but can they be imaginary? No. So for example, someone give me one polynomial. Can someone give me a polynomial? Anyone. There's literally an infinity of them. For, how about 4x cubed plus 2? Two. 2. Is that a polynomial? Yes. yes, it is. Are all the coefficients real? What's the invisible term right here? Anybody know? X to the what? Zero. Because mm -hmm. what's x to the zero? One. Is that a polynomial? Yes, it is. Is it written in proper form? What do you think? Is this written in most simplified proper form right there? Yeah. It is. Generally speaking, we, what, what, what do we like to descend? The powers. We like the powers to descend. Are there any like terms that we need to combine? Are there any terms that we can combine? No. So yeah, that's written in the nicest form. I like that. Simplest form. Fantastic. Can someone tell me, what about this, this one right here? Is this? Is that a polynomial? Yeah. yeah. Are the exponents whole numbers? Yes. yes. Are the coefficients real? Yes. Yeah. So what could I do to make it not a polynomial? Like I said, I don't know. N of x is equal to, how about the square root of negative 2x squared plus x. Is that a polynomial? No, it's not. So the reason we need to know this is because we're going to be spending most of our time dealing with polynomials or different combinations of polynomials or different ways of putting them together. Rational functions are one of those things we get when we put polynomials together. The easiest way to remember what a rational function is, what are the first five letters of rational? Ratio. ratio. See ratio right there, everybody? What's a ratio? Mm -hmm. So what's a rational function? It's a ratio of two what? What's a rational function? It's the ratio of? Two functions. And what type of function are we dealing with? So a rational function is going to be a function of the form p of x over q of x, where p and x are both, p and q of x are both polynomials. A polynomial over a polynomial is going to be called a rational function. Here, here's a secret, though. Is 6 something I could write as a fraction? Yeah. What's the simplest way I could write it as a fraction? Exactly. And is that equal to 6x to the 0 over 1x to the 0? So is technically 6 a rational function? Sure. Do we use that as a rational function? No. We usually have like quadratics over something else to make it a little more interesting. But here's the thing. Have you seen polynomials and rational functions pretty much your entire mathematical life? 
Did everybody go like, yeah, you have, you have. You've definitely seen them before. So, how many people have seen phrases like this before? Y'all, who's seen limits before? Raise your hand if you've seen limits before. Who took pre-calculus last year? Okay, there we go. Who least, I didn't ask for you if you could, you know, A plus or ace a test right now, but have you seen limits before? Never seen limits before? Fantastic, this is excellent then. Who, though, in this group could tell me what this says? Can anybody decode that for me? What does that say? Approaches from the right, what did we say the function does? It goes up. And what did we say as it approached from the left? It goes down. It goes down. Exactly. Let's look at the next two here. This says as x goes to infinity. So as x gets infinitely what? Big. big. As x gets infinitely big. So as x goes on a little journey over to the right, what does it get infinitely close to? Two, two from the left. It gets infinitely two from the right. Ah, so here's the thing. This is the output. So instead, left and right is over here. Now it's what instead of left and right? Oh, Up right. and down. down. So here's the function. X is getting infinitely big. And what does the function do? What does the value do? It gets infinitely close to two. two. So as this function is going out to the right, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. And what is it getting infinitely close to? Two. As x goes to negative infinity, so here's x, what's it doing? It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and getting infinitely close to 2, but from the, from the negative, from the bottom, from the bottom, yes, so from how, the bottom. How do you assume that, that, the, that, uh, yeah, 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 I'm just, it's not part of the graph, it's just our barrier. All this is telling us is the following, and we'll use, um, I'll use, uh, let's go with gray here, here's gray. Oh look, it gets infinitely close like that. And what does the other one do? Let's go with, um, how about, uh, we'll go with green again here. Here's green. It goes up and it goes like this. It approaches this. So what's going on here? As the function gets infinitely big, what does it get infinitely close to? And this, this isn't a line, I should be curving it. Mm -hmm. It's getting infinitely close to two from the top. And it's getting infinitely close to two from the bottom. Do these four things tell us anything about like the middle? No. no. So what could the functions do? Anything. Anything. So theoretically, theoretically, Calvin, theoretically, this is what it could look like. Ready? Theoretically, it could go like this. But then, as you go to infinity, what does it do? It approaches from the top. You might have heard before that you can't cross an asymptote. How many people have heard that before? Some asymptotes can be crossed. There's only one type of asymptote that can't be crossed. What's the one type you can't cross? There's one asymptote up there I didn't draw. Vertical asymptote. So see this asymptote right here? What's the equation of that asymptote right there? It's x equals 0. It's a vertical asymptote right there. You can't cross vertical, but can, is it possible sometimes to cross horizontal asymptotes? Yeah, you, it is possible for this function easily to do this and come up again and come back down. Absolutely. But again, this is just asking, draw a function. So when they say draw a function, draw the simplest one. Okay. Draw the simplest one. If you start making all the possible assumptions, you can do anything you want. You could draw Batman if you wanted to. Literally, you could. Bonus question. Write now on your paper or in your notebook or whatever is in front of you, write down the word asymptote. Write it down. It goes to the right. What happens to the function? Look at the graph. Can someone tell me? Can they read it? Can they tell me? What does the function go to as x gets infinitely big? Yeah. One from the top. One from the top. Do you see that right there? Yeah. One from the top. OK, we'll change this up a little bit. What about this one right here? As x goes to negative infinity, what does the function do? Someone else, someone new. Yeah. One from the bottom. Exactly, right there. Perfect. What about this one right here? x goes to negative 2 from the left. As x goes to negative 2 from the left, this is tricky. x goes to negative 2 from the left. Anybody new want to tell me what happens there? If you're on the function and you're traveling, your x value is going to negative 2 from the left. So you're like marching along going, do, 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 do. What happens? Where do you go to? What? Negative. 
Negative infinity. Exactly, because look what happens. It goes down. Okay, let's do one more here. What happens is it goes to negative 2 from the right. Negative 2 from the right. Someone knew. Negative 2 from the right. Calvin. Um, so as x goes to negative 2 from the right. So here's negative 2 right there. So if, as you go to negative 2, what, what does oh, this function do? It goes to infinity. It goes to infinity. I like writing positive just for clarity. I just like doing that. It's the same thing. Do this for me. Do the last two by yourself. Do E and F. See if you can fill these in by yourself. Vertical asymptotes. And it says where vertical asymptotes come from where the function is undefined. I'd like to be more specific. That's where the denominator is undefined. Are there other ways to, yeah, you can have other ways. But we look for ways where the denominator is undefined, where the denominator causes, causes the undefinition. So you're really looking at the denominator. So what's that one number you're not allowed to plug in? Three. We don't want zero in the denominator. So to do that, our vertical asymptote is x equals three. What type of line is x equals three? It's a vertical line, exactly. State the end behaviors. The end behaviors are what happens as x goes to infinity of the function and what happens as x goes to negative infinity of the function. So when you're looking at the first one right here, when you're looking at the first one, you're looking at a big number plus 4 over a big number minus 3. What is that about equal to? What's a billion over a billion? One. It's about equal to 1. The question is, is it greater than 1 or less than 1? Is it greater than 1 or less than 1? Greater. It's greater than 1. If you ever have trouble seeing this, literally plug in a big number. We used a billion, but we could use a million instead. How about this? Here's 1 million and 4 over 999,997. Because that's 1 million plus 4 over 1 million what? Minus what? 3. Three. Well, is it greater than or less than 1? Which one is it? Yeah. It's greater than 1. So are you approaching from the top or bottom? Top. Let's do the same thing over here. You're going to negative infinity. So it's going to be big, but what's the difference here? Big negative, right? Plus 4 over big negative minus 3. Now don't assume it's just the opposite. It is in this case, but don't assume it. Do out the logic. So what's, let's choose a million again. So what's it going to be? Negative a million. Be very careful about this. Plus 4 over negative a million what? Minus 3. What's negative a million plus 4? Yeah, there you go. Over. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, is that greater than or less than 1? That's the negatives cancel. It is less than 1, right? So are you approaching from the left, from the bottom or the top? From the bottom. Does that make sense what we did there? Choose, if you get stuck, literally choose a big number. I, I like a million because it's not nine digits, it's six. So, but like, <laughs> or, yeah, six zeros. So like if you plug in what types of intercepts are there? Yeah. There are what intercepts and what intercepts? X intercepts are when what is zero? Y is zero. And the Y intercepts are when? X is zero. So what do you, you literally just plug in stuff. Generally speaking, what's easier to find, the Y intercept or the X intercepts? What do you think? You've done this before. Generally speaking, which one's easier? Yeah, usually there can only be one y-intercept, so it's usually easier. So we plug in 0. If you plug in 0 for x, what do you get? Negative 4 thirds. 4 over negative 3, yeah. Now over here, you're plugging in y is 0. So if 0 is equal to x plus 4 over x minus 3, here, what's the only way a fraction can be zero? What's the only way a fraction can be zero? What has to be true about that fraction? Well, no, what is, well, you got the answer, but what's the numerator? Yeah, so we know x plus 4 has to be zero, so what does x have to be? X has to be negative. So when you say this, it's going to be, oh, there it is. So when you say your answers, I like writing intercepts as points. How many x-intercepts can a function have? A lot. In general, 
there are three numbers of answers. Doesn't exist, so zero. One or what? Infinity. <laughs> In math, those are, those are the most common numbers of answers. Sometimes, I think my favorite math questions are the ones that are like, how many intercepts does this have? 17. <laughs> like, those are really cool questions because usually you have no intercepts, one intercept, maybe two, or like a trillion. 